Uh, we turn our attention next to the Conservative Party. And the question of who you think will be best for Britain and who you think will be best for business. And by business, I don't mean international or domestic commerce. I mean you and me. I mean the time that we spend together. So one of the great tragedies and, and contradictions of my professional life has been the fact that nothing has been better for my career than Brexit. In fact, the next time someone asks you for a Brexit benefit, you could say, well, it, it made James whatever he is today, whatever that is. Um, it's not necessarily something that people who voted for Brexit would offer up as a benefit, <laughs> generally speaking, certainly not people who still think it was a good idea, bless the little cotton socks. But, but, um, but it, is a, it, is, it is unfortunately just true. Um, and similarly, some Tory MPs over the last few years have been very good for business. They, they sort of, um, if you subscribe to the old adage that there's no such thing as bad publicity, then people like Nadine Dorries have been essentially uh, PR geniuses when it comes to uh, inflating my own importance. Uh, I would argue far beyond what it should be. But when one of the front runners to be the next leader of the Conservative Party decides to talk about you on stage at the Conservative Party conference while bidding for the support of delegates and members, you, you could be forgiven for allowing that to go to your head and think that you're more important than you actually are. Um, and then similarly, brilliant for business in the way that pointing out the really mad stuff was um, something we could do here, which for reasons I still don't understand wasn't happening in many other places. It wasn't happening in many other parts of the media. So, you know, not exclusively by any stretch of the imagination. Channel 4 News did some great work. BBC, sadly, with some glorious exceptions like Victoria Derbyshire and, uh, and Michelle Hussein and others, um, uh, really did hold power to account but some of the others I'm afraid were too desperate to retain access to the likes of Boris Johnson to um, ever ask them um, difficult questions um, so I'm thinking of Nadine Doyle's not knowing how Channel 4 was funded while talking to the media select committee about the funding of Channel 4 you think back to who would be the other great examples that the idea of Marc Francois do you remember him having serious sway in the Parliamentary Conservative Party. Uh, Brexit hard man, the hard man of Brexit, Steve Baker. I mean, the the number of comical incompetence in the Tory ranks over the last few years is probably, after Brexit, the best thing that has ever happened to me. I mean, so, I mean, now you could imagine how hard it would be to pretend that anything, as we proved in the last hour, anything that's gone on under Labour merits even the... The slimmest scintilla of comparison with what went on under the Tories, particularly if you concentrate upon corruption and cronyism. Desperate attempts by right-wing uh, tummy ticklers to pretend that Labour is, is, is in some way comparable to the people that they never criticised. I mean, it is obviously comical. But if you take corruption and cronyism as your guiding lights, as your lodestars, then the Tory party was the gift that kept on giving. And, and, and then the incompetence. So corruption, cronyism and competence, the three C's. There is a fourth, but um, Ofcom prevent me from suggesting to you what that might be. <laughs> so corruption, cronyism and competence. Uh, I, I, I think even things like Rishi Sunak, who wasn't a particularly incompetent politician, Rishi Sunak not having an umbrella with him when he announced the next general election. I Just for a minute, and this is a bit of whataboutery, but imagine how the media outlets that are going after Angela Rayner for both accepting clothes from a donor and spending her own money on clothes, which leaves her, I don't know where it leaves her in terms of clothes, what clothes she is allowed to possess. Um, or purchase for others. Imagine what that kind of media energy would look like if it was being directed at what went on under the last lot. I mean, it is genuinely extraordinary, isn't it? I don't know how much we know about these people. James Cleverly was up to his ears in Boris Johnson's corruption and cronyism. Was it Cleverly? Or, no, I, I, I forget, but I didn't... I know, maybe that... Uh, you see what I mean? Nadim Zahawi ended up being Chancellor and then had to stop being Chancellor because he hadn't told the Prime Minister that he was being... In fact, I think he tried to sue people that were reporting he was being investigated by the tax authorities. And they were just unbelievably awful. I worried when they were out of power that we wouldn't be able to talk about them anymore, but that would be like not talking about the Roman Empire 
if you were trying to track the uh, the history of debauchery. Um, so good for business. Who's going to be best for business? I think it's probably, of the three who are left, it's probably going to be one of the two that seem to be... Have we got the Mariah Carey thing as well? Have we got the Mariah Carey thing? Can I have the Mariah Carey thing as well so it works a bit better? If, if we're going to be looking at what's best for, for business, for our time together every morning, and remember, if you're not here every morning, I need a note off your mum by the end of morning break. I, I think it's going to be different. The one that we think would actually be best for Britain, and I don't know what we mean by that because it's quite hard to put policy clear blue water between them. They all seem to be singing from very similar hymn sheets. James cleverly stood up in front of the Conservative Party conference and said, we need to be less weird, which is true. Um, but his two remaining rivals, Honest Bob Jenrick and Kemi Badenoch, are both quite weird. Badenoch probably slightly weirder than Jenrick. Jenrick more sinister, perhaps, than Badenoch. I don't know. I'm interested in your thoughts on this. But James Cleverly is... Pro well, he is, isn't he? He is measurably more allied to what has gone before. So the idea that the man who held the biggest and highest offices under the last lot, or the lot before is best qualified to lead the party away from where it has been, should, in a normal universe, be hilarious, shouldn't it? What was his last job? Was it? I mean, he was Foreign Secretary and Home Secretary, wasn't he? And yet he thinks he's the one to sort of start a brave new dawn, a brave new world. It's a new dawn and a brave new world, isn't it? Um, so what do you think? And what do we know much about the differences between them? Do we know much? 0345 973 is the number that you need. Um, I, I want you to answer both questions. I, I think there's probably going to be a broad consensus on who we think is going to be the best for Britain. But you need to tell me what you mean by that and why. All right. I know this is a little bit unfair because you're, you're not that engaged in it all and you don't know that much about any of them except the gaffes. And of course, we're bad or not rises head and shoulders above the other two is not just by making gaffes but by giving an interview in which she explained it with incredible arrogance and if there's anything I'm an expert on it's arrogance incredible arrogance about how she never needs to apologize because she never makes gaffes and she has spent the rest of the uh, leadership campaign with both feet in her mouth it's quite extraordinary whether she's talking about m maternity cover or indeed um being working class because she once worked in McDonald's or becoming working class the minute she walked through the door of McDonald's to begin her first shift. So gaffes are okay. But making lots of gaffes while also boasting about never making gaffes is why if I had to pick at the moment, I think bad not would be best for business. I think we'd have a lot more fun, wouldn't we, with Kemi bad not? See, there's nothing funny about painting over cartoons in a processing centre for unaccompanied child asylum seekers. That's just, that's like the child catcher out of chitty chitty bang bang levels of evil. I don't know about you, I don't know which villain in children's films haunted your childhood and indeed much of your adolescence, but for me it was always the child catcher out of chitty chitty bang bang. And when my kids were of an age to watch it, I, I almost didn't want them to watch it because I was so traumatised by that one single character. In a children's film, you can't compare it with Freddy Krueger or Jason out of Friday the 13th. That was a children's film. The idea that you could be horribly traumatised by an entertainment designed for children. But Jenrick's a child catcher, right? That's not funny. Badenoch has, and this is often professional suicide for politicians, Badenoch has become ridiculous, truly ridiculous. Not just the comments about maternity leave and McDonald's making her work in class, but crucially, the interview in which she insisted that she never makes any gaffes, in the same breath as making a massive gaffe. So I think that she'd probably be better for business, but I, but I want you to know why. Um, Hilton points out none of those three would be good for Britain. So, all right then, clever clogs. Least bad. So it doesn't have to be what's best for Britain. Who would be least bad for Britain? And I don't know what you mean by that. Do you mean because we need robust opposition to democracy? We need someone who at least joins in the return to reality that the Labour Party is trying to undertake, as in politics based upon things that are true and things that can and will happen, as opposed to constant sloganeering and, and fantasy unicorn chasing. 
or is it is it something um, more nuanced than that? Who is it going to be? Who is going to be best for British politics? All right, oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three, and which of them is going to be best for this program? And the fun that we often have together. Well, who is going to fill the space left by hard man of Brexit, Steve Baker or Digby Pudding Jones, or all of the contributors to unhinged headlines? Who, who of the three is most likely to delight us with their awfulness for the next five years?